After making an appearance in the NBA Finals last season, the Miami Heat just haven't been the same to start off the season for many different reasons. However, the way they're looking right now, there's a good chance they could have beaten Nikola Jokic's Nuggets. Here's why. We can't talk about the Heat turning things around without talking about their incredible defense as of late. Over the past 10 games, the Heat have the number one ranked defense according to NBA.com, and they've been in and out of the top 10 all season long. The on-court mastermind behind all of this is none other than Bam Adebayo. If you were to look at the stat sheet, you would think he's a terrible defender since he doesn't rack up blocks or steals. But for those who actually understand defense, you know that those stats don't mean anything. Context matters. Players like Victor Wimbanyama, Nick Claxton, Chet Holmgren, and others have more blocks than Bam by a large margin, but he is still light years ahead of them when it comes to defensive ability and impact. His impact is similar to Draymond's. While the stat sheet is underwhelming, the on-court results are some of the best of all time. For starters, Bam is an excellent post defender. Outside of Al Horford, he is hands down the best at guarding reigning MVP Joel Embiid, which obviously isn't the easiest task. At 250 pounds, Bam is very solid and strong down low and provides resistance against literally anyone. Then, most importantly, he has incredible discipline, which is definitely the most crucial quality to have in order to guard superstars, because superstars like Joel Embiid and Nikola Jokic are very crafty and intelligent down low. If you blindly guard them without using your IQ, they're going to have you in foul trouble in like two or three minutes. No, seriously, I've seen it happen. Next is his rotations and help defense. This is another quality that separates good from great defenders. Some big and tall players rely heavily on blocks due to their length and God-given athleticism. But then there's defenders like Bam, who controls a defense, prevents plays from happening, and doesn't get confused on switches no matter what decoy actions the offense throws at his team. His mind is sharp, and he's at the right place at the right time more times than not. He's the main reason why the Heat are sixth in points allowed in the paint, and over the last 10 games, they're third. This impact is why he makes a great argument of being the best defensive player in the NBA right now. And although that title probably goes to Rudy Gobert and AD, Bam is still in the mix without question. The icing on the cake for his defense is his ability to switch and guard on the perimeter. Being able to guard guys on the perimeter makes the Heat's defense so damn flexible. When you have all five guys on the court who can guard, it's tough for offenses to exploit mismatches and find weaknesses in the defense. The thing is, though, no matter how great he's been on this end, a Defensive Player of the Year trophy will not be coming to him anytime soon because, unfortunately, whoever votes for this award only looks at blocks and steel stats. That's an argument for another day though. Jimmy Butler is definitely the second man up on this defense that has high impact. Although he's missed some games this season, he's just as important as Bam on this end. He can defend positions one through four while being one of the best off-ball defenders in the league. His defense has definitely been undervalued by the media over the past few years due to his rise in offense. He's still elite in every way. Caleb Martin holds his own as well. He's an important part of the defense that really shows in big games. But the Heat recently signed an elite defender at the buyout market. And well, he's doing exactly what he was brought in to do. Daylon Wright is not a household name by any means, but those who do know him knows he is a lengthy pest guard who has some of the best off-ball reflexes you'll ever see when it comes to getting steals. This is a pickup that truly shows its value in the playoffs when he has the task of defending some of the best guards in the conference. Players like Kevin Love and Jamie Chakwes Jr. have been solid team defenders as well to their credit. Even Duncan Robinson has shown improvement on defense. They just all seem to have bought into the Heat culture, the gritty style and culture that every team in the league wants to create whether they admit it or not. The Miami Heat was established as an expansion team in 1988, bringing professional basketball to the vibrant city of Miami. The team's early years were marked by struggles typical of expansion franchises, but it laid the groundwork for a culture that would later become what we all know and love today. In 1995, the Heat made a pivotal move by acquiring Pat Riley as their head coach and team president. Riley, already a proven winner with the Los Angeles Lakers, brought with him a championship pedigree and a vision for building a winning culture in Miami. Under Pat Riley's leadership, the Miami Heat underwent a transformation. Riley instilled a mindset of discipline, hard work, and commitment to winning. This marked the beginning of the renowned Heat culture, a term that would come to represent a standard of excellence both on and off the court. The team's blue-collar work ethic became a defining characteristic. Players were expected to give their all in every practice, every game, and every 
season. This commitment to relentless effort and selfless teamwork laid the foundation for the Heat's future success. In the 2005-2006 season, the Miami Heat achieved an historic milestone by winning their first NBA championship. Led by the dynamic duo of Dwayne Wade and Shaquille O'Neal, the Heat overcame the Dallas Mavericks in a thrilling six-game series. The victory not only brought the city of Miami its first NBA title, but it also solidified the Heat's place among the league's elite. The championship run showcased the resilience and tenacity instilled by Riley's leadership. Wade's iconic performances, including a finals MVP-worthy display in Game 3, captured the hearts of Heat fans and marked the beginning of a new era for the franchise. As the years progressed, Pat Riley continued to mold the Heat culture, and in 2010, he orchestrated one of the most significant free agent coups in NBA history. LeBron James and Chris Bosh joined forces with Dwayne Wade to form the legendary Big Three. The star-studded trio aimed not only to win championships, but also to redefine the standards of team basketball. The Heat reached four consecutive NBA Finals from 2011 to 2014, securing back-to-back -back championships in 2012 and 2013. The Heatles, as they were affectionately called, dominated the league with their fast-paced, unselfish style of play. LeBron James, widely regarded as one of the greatest players of all time, led the charge, and the Heat became the face of the NBA. The Heat culture also extended off of the court, with a strong emphasis on community engagement and philanthropy. The Heat's commitment to making a positive impact in South Florida became a source of pride for fans and players alike. In recent years, the Miami Heat have continued to build on its legacy. The team's ability to develop young talent, coupled with strategic roster moves, has kept the Heat in contention. The 2019-2020 season saw the Heat reach the NBA Finals once again, led by emerging stars like Bam Adebayo and Tyler Hero, along with seasoned veterans. Then, of course, last season, as mentioned in the beginning. My point is, you could never really count out the Miami Heat as a team and organization, especially when led by Jimmy Butler. He's averaging 21 points, 5 rebounds, and 4 assists per game while shooting 50% from the field, and an even more impressive 40% from 3. We talked about his defense, but as we know, his offense is just as good. And while he doesn't score as much as other stars in the league, we know he can average just as much as anyone in a playoff series. He's just a big game player. And he even spoke on that recently. He said this, I'm just different. I think this is when you're supposed to be playing your best basketball. And you have to find a way to get your team to win these games when you're talking about the playoffs coming around. But even right now, you're getting everybody into their roles. You're getting in a rhythm. And with my music, I'm getting in my rhythm. Speaking for myself and everybody else in this locker room, we want to win. That's our focus. Yeah, he's just him. Or like he said, he's different. There's really no explanation for being able to go from playing like a normal all-star to an all-time great in the postseason. You either have that ability or you don't. Bam Adebayo has been playing great on the offensive end as well. Over the last seven games, he's averaging 22 and eight rebounds while playing that great defense we talked about earlier. His offensive contribution is key if they want to maximize their chances of winning a much deserved title. But that's maybe the main reason they picked up Terry Rozier, someone who is struggling from three as of late, but after returning recently from injury, we should give him a little more time to settle in. Nonetheless, we know how important of a scorer he can be for the Heat in big games. If you watched the Heat's playoff series versus the Celtics last year, scoring was definitely a huge problem. So he's going to need to contribute in that department for sure. Like Butler, Tyler Hero has dealt with his fair share of injuries. However, he's still averaging a phenomenal season, averaging 20 points, 5 rebounds, and 4 assists per game while shooting 40% from 3. When Hero is on the floor, he is the second best option next to Butler. If he hadn't missed the NBA Finals with that broken hand, the Nuggets may not have won as easily. So the most important thing for this group is to stay healthy, especially their main three in Butler, Bam, and Hero. And their role players have been excellent. Duncan Robinson has played nearly every game and is shooting 40% from three. Kevin Love has been a solid stretch four who cleans the glass better than maybe anyone on the roster. Plus, his championship experience helps. Caleb Martin has been shooting it nicely from deep. The rookie, Jamie Jacquez Jr., has cooled off a bit from how he started the season, but he's still obviously going to need to be the perfect glue guy come playoff time. He's been good in just about every aspect of the game except shooting. So if he can up those percentages, he makes the Heat's offense 10 times more dangerous. But what do you guys think? Do you think this is the year the Miami Heat finally get a ring again? Let me know in the comments down below. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.